Hi, welcome back to D Adventure. Today we wanted to do a little bit of a product review on some of the things that we purchased to uh, make full-time living a little bit easier, you know, when you have problems and so forth. Uh, we're sticking with one brand of tools for the most part. Just use the fact the battery pack interchange, something to think about, a little less uh, charging systems and batteries that you have to have. Uh, I went with DeWalt because they make good products and they're easily accepted. You know, you can get them anywhere. Blaine's, uh, Farm and Sweet, Walmart, any place. So that's why I went with DeWalt. What I'm planning to use is I got a cordless drill. It's powerful, it's lightweight. It does the job. Also, a uh, quarter impact. It works great. You can use sockets, do a lot of repairs, put different types of bits in for screws and torque headed screws and so forth. Instead of having a circular saw, I decided to use a jigsaw. And you can still cut straight by using some type of board for uh, a guide. You can also cut circles and so forth. If you need to do any renovation or anything like that, we can do that. Here I've got a grinder with a cutoff blade on it. This cutoff blade here, uh, you could use it for any type of metal repair. Uh, I know people have put too much stuff on their bumpers, had bumper problems and so forth, anything like that. You put a grinding stone, uh, put a wire wheel, you want to touch up the paint on the chassis or anything. We got that. For cleaning out the basement storage areas, and so forth, we've got this little uh, cordless vacuum. You know, it's, it's not your shot back power, but it works perfect for picking up small debris and so forth. Plus, we can clean out the truck. You get into certain campgrounds, you know, you've got sandy soils and so forth. And we usually take our shoes off when we go in the camper, but in the truck, you know, it's a different story. So, we've got that. A light, a rechargeable light. This one here happens to be a Mac rechargeable light. Um, it's LED, super, super bright, has three different settings. And uh, I chose this one that has magnets on it. If you are changing a tire, you can simply stick it to the frame of the vehicle, shine a light, you know, in that spot. Um, plus, it's very long charge on this. Uh, I think they said up to 12 hours. Uh, continuous use on one charge. So uh, I got this light, it's really nice. A lot of these tools I use for my job right now, uh, we will be putting in the RV with us when we do go full time in a few years. This here is my charger for all the batteries. Plus it's a radio. It does a wonderful job. April Fools. I'll be here Monday by the way. On w uh, it's pretty lightweight, very rugged to set it outside with us. Uh, take it to the beach when we have a, you know, picnic or whatnot. Again, it has the charger on the back, so it can be cordless, or you can simply charge your batteries with the AC cord and play the radio at the same time. Really like that. Uh, most likely, I will be. Selling this, have this and a weed eater portable battery power. But uh, like I said, I kind of want to stick with DeWalt, so I believe I'm going to get a DeWalt blower. This come in real handy with cleaning off your your mats and the outdoor areas. You know, you go to some RV parks and there's a lot of leaves and things. It'll come in handy for that. Plus, a lot of people don't realize this. <laughs> Turn these on when you're building a fire, instead of getting down there and puffing, it works great for getting a good fire going in your fire pit. So that's a few of the tools that we're going to be taking. Uh, I have a 200 piece socket and wrench set that comes in a carrying case. Uh, most likely we'll take that with us and we'll be able to handle just about any type of repair that we need to in the RV. I mean, that's important, but uh, I'm just going to handle most of everything I can myself, and 
these will be the tools to do that with. Plus, it all will go into one nice box for easy storage. I'll get a waterproof type box and uh, put everything into it because this does come off, so this all can be stored in. Probably keep the radio inside. It's actually better than the house radio, so I might use it inside. But yeah, that's it on the tools. Um, and now what we're going to do is we also purchased a generator. Uh, it's not a Honda. We looked at Hondas and decided for the price that this unit would be more more along with what we want. We want to buy two of them and get a parallel kit so that we can uh, run both at the same time and run an AC if we need to. Um, the size of the 4,000 watts and bigger generators are just so heavy and bulky. I like the size of the 2,000 watt, 1,700 running watt RV uh, type generator. So I'm going to get that box down here, remove all this stuff, and we're going to open that up for the first time, take a look at it, and uh, I'll see you back here in a few minutes and we'll, uh, we'll go over what we found. Okay, we got it unboxed here. Um, again, this is a 2100 starting watts, 1700 running watts. So it's supposed to be quieter than the Honda and lighter than the Honda. Uh, so we'll see about that. But inside the box, you get, of course, the owner's manual. This is a Furman, I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, Herman, I looked it up, the company, uh, they have made generators for years and years under other names, and they have now released generators under their own name. I was told that they, this is basically a champion, because champion makes, or uh, Furman makes champion generators, uh, but that's what I was told. So, you get the owner's manual, and here you get a quick start guide kind of tells you what you need to do before you first fire it up. Um, they are shipped without oil. It's kind of hard to forget that because in the box they give you a funnel and the oil. So just in case somebody on the assembly line does not put oil in them, most of the generators that come, especially from Champion, I know they all do not have oil in them when they're shipped. So if they forget to put this in there, be sure and check. Um, if you're not sure, contact the owner manual, look in there, or contact the person you bought it from to find out whether or not you need oil. In there also, screwdriver, I'm assuming to take off covers to get to the spot plug, and it has a spot plug wrench in the box. This here is a an adapter so that I'm assuming you can plug this in and charge your uh, vehicle battery and whatnot. That's the spring coming and getting the boats out. <laughs> but uh, that's in the package as well. This does not have an RV plug and I know that Honda sells a particular model that has a 30 amp plug, but most of these bigger campers are all 50 amp. A lot of even the travel trailers are going to 50 amp. So that wouldn't have done me any good anyways. I would have still needed some type of an adapter. This does not have any type of 30 amp plug. It has the standard 110 plug. Two of them. So with that said, I bought the adapter that screws into the camper. It's a 50 amp to a 15 amp circuit. So now I can just use, I have a, uh, I think it's a 12 gauge extension cord. So we'll be able to place the generator, even though it's very quiet, even further away from the RV, uh, given whether you have the location and room to do so. But uh, just use a regular extension cord that you can buy anywhere versus having to get out a $200 50 amp cord 
This is uh, I got this off of Amazon. I believe it was $24.99. So it's really going to make it nice, easy to plug into and and whatnot for the generator. But basically, all we're going to use this generator here for is to charge the batteries, uh, run a few accessories, perhaps turn the microwave on at occasion. Um, that's really all we're going to use it for. It's not going to be intended to run the AC or whatnot. I mean, it is pretty lightweight, so you know that's why I do like going with this and possibly going to and running them in parallel. If it, it's much easier to carry two light generators than one big heavy one. Plus, I can store this in easier places than a big bulky one. Um, we talked about putting a uh, box in the front of the truck, in front of the hitch, the fifth wheel hitch, and placing these down in there. Uh, we don't know exactly yet. We'll figure that out as we as we go on here. But for now, I just bought one. Wanted to try it out and check it. And uh, so far, I'm liking what I see. It looks very well made. You know, it's a, it's a lot of times you get them and the plastic pieces don't fit tight and whatnot. It's all very tight. I like these rubber seals. I mean, they're not just plastic caps. They're actually a rubber. So they snap in really good and make nice cover for the plug so you don't get, you know, dirt and debris in there. You have a gas shut off choke, a run and off switch. And this here will be your positive negative outlet if you're running the parallel cord. Circuit breaker. Ah, I see. So this has a 12 volt DC plug, so on my mistake, this is probably to charge the battery using the alligator clips and the 12 volt circuit. So that could come in handy too. I suppose you could, plus, you know, if you did run your vehicle battery down or whatnot, you could always, you know, use this to charge it back up that way. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some oil on it, uh, read through the owner's manual and the quick uh, reference guide, and we're going to fire it up. Now that we have it unboxed, we put gas in and oil. Uh, we're going to fire it up here. See you want to what it that. takes. A little, another reminder here: engine ship without lubricant. Your your cap bent is on. Turn fuel valve to the on position. Choke fuel is on. Okay, pull the choke lever out to the start position. Let's try it. thing I see right there is hanging like that. There's that. Let's go fire it up.
say my overall impressions of it so far, I really like it. Uh, pretty lightweight, dark, easy, very quiet. Um, it could not run the microwave, the refrigerator, and the charger at the same time. Uh, but again, it's only 1,700 running watts. I think the refrigerator takes about 7, 800 watts just to start. Uh, you have the charger, and then you turn on a microwave, a 1,000 watt microwave. I mean, you're overloading it at that point. But mainly, again, one of these is just to charge the battery so that while we're out dry camping or travel days, we can you know, stop and maybe watch a little TV before we go to bed and, and whatnot. So, for that purpose, we're uh, happy with it. So, we're going to use it a few times at the beginning of this year. We're going to do some dry camping down uh, along the Mississippi River. And we'll take it down there with us and, and use it and kind of get a feel for it. And I'll make a video then. Until then, uh, we're very pleased with it. So, alright, we'll catch you guys later. Yeah.